Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. As for today we're recording outside because in my room up there it's kind of a furnace <laughs> and I can't record without sweating. I actually need to, to have the fan spinning all the time and even then it is quite hot. So as for today's video we have the review of the new Adrenaline Twin, no, just the Adrenaline Technical Preview Drivers. And as I say in all my videos, technical is because it's technical and preview it's because it is a preview, kind of a beta. And by the way, today I'm using my new tripod and this thing is from K&F Concept and this thing is built like a tank. Like today's sponsor. World of Tanks, a massive free-to-play multiplayer PC game with 100 million players. And if you download it from the link below, it will be 100 million and one. Roll out across open fields, steep hills, forests, deserts and urban zones in over 40 battle arenas and with over 800 tanks from every category. From destroyers and artillery to light, medium and heavy tanks, which means there's always new ways to win. World of Tanks also focuses on historic accuracy and inspiration, which means authentic models and vehicle characteristics for every tank. And you can go even further and modify yours to create a steel beast ready for any challenge. If you're a new player, use the invite code COMBAT to get 7 days of premium access and many other bonuses. And if you're a returning player that hasn't played for over 30 days, you also get 3 days of premium access and much more. Download World of Tanks now with the link below. These drivers are the technical preview for AFMF2 and if you don't know what AFMF is, it is a frame generation technology that doesn't need um, to have frame generation implement implemented inside the game. It isn't as efficient or as good in terms of quality compared to FSR3 frame generation because since it isn't inside the game it doesn't have access to, to the game's motion vectors but the overall quality and now with AFMF2 the overall latency was also decreased while the overall quality was increased. So it is what it is, frame generation technology. And these technical preview drivers allow you to use AFMF2 on the RX 6000 series and 7000 series. So you, if you want to test AFMF2, like you see in this video passing right on the screen that I released some hours ago, you just have to download these drivers and AFMF2 will be enabled for you once again if you have an RX 6000 and RX 7000 series. Now as for the drivers, let's start with Preview Driver Introduction. Welcome to the latest AMD Software Adrenaline Edition Preview Driver, featuring new technologies and updates currently under development, including groundbreaking AMD Fluid Motion Frames, AFMF2, a major advancement in frame generation technology. Explore the innovations in this driver by reading our blog. And I'm making this video because some people were asking several questions on the AFMF2 video, and some of them didn't even know that this driver is downloadable right now so I made this video for for people to know that they can download this driver and use AFMF2 uh, on their system with RDNA 3 and RDNA 2 cards and even RDNA 3.5 if you're using a laptop. As for the important notes, this preview driver offers an early look at upcoming features. We encourage you to provide feedback through AMD Bug Report Tool. Yes, just use the AMD Bug Report Tool if you have issues. Thank you. If any persistent issues occur while using the preview driver, please use the AMD Auto Detect and Install Tool to revert to the latest recommended version of the AMD Software Adrenaline Edition. <laughs> Rex, call it. And by the way, if you're having issues uninstalling these drivers we did you, for example, you can just try AMD Cleanup Utility or make sure that you have the latest DDU version because sometimes if you are running an older DDU version and you are trying to uninstall properly the current drivers, it just won't work as intended. So make sure to have DDU updated and if it doesn't work, use AMD Cleanup Utility. Now we have new feature highlights with AFMF2 technical preview, a major advancement in frame generation technology for AMD HyperRx and not only HyperRx, you can use it outside of HyperRx, which is basically um, a mix of several feature features being used at the same time. And now we have a van passing through, yeah. We have fast motion optimization, enjoy smoother gameplay and higher FPS with improved frame generation consistency during fast motion. This is one of the things that, it, that they improved because with the FMF1, the, as soon as you made some really, really heavy or some really, really fast mouse movements, basically if the input on the mouse was really aggressive, um, the frame generation would disable itself for let's say one or two seconds and then would go back up. And that made them um, 
made the, um, the motion feel really, really bad because once again, we were having like frame generation, no frame generation, frame generation, no frame generation, and the pacing uh, would make the game feel kind of stutterish, while AFMF2 improved that a lot. Improved borderless full screen support, with expanded display mode support for RDNA 3 series graphics products, no RDNA 2 here, it seems, ensures compatibility with virtually all borderless full screen games. We also have expanded API support with enable AFMF2 for any OpenGL, which is new, Vulkan, the X11 and 12 titles. Now we have support, official support for Vulkan and OpenGL and this is huge because people using emulation a lot, like emulators from for PS2, PS3, uh, for Nintendo Wii, for several other things, most emulators use nowadays Vulkan and the ones that don't use Vulkan they use OpenGL and usually those emulators are locked to 60 frames and you can just use AFMF to push those 60 frames to 120 so this is amazing major thing for people using emulation and for people running some games that are locked for example games locked like Elden Ring and so on you can just use uh, AFMF2 like you can use lossless scaling and uh, improve your smoothness by going from 60 to 120 FPS and believe me overall it is much better of course if you have at least a 120 Hertz monitor and the last one is Radeon Chill Interop Support. AFMF2 now supports Radeon Chill, providing a low latency FPS capping option. Previously with AFMF1, we could only use the, the frame limiting option with RTSS, for example, or the in-game frame limiting option, or you had to use FRTC, basically frame rate target control, yes. Uh, which adds way more latency than RTSS and even RTSS adds more latency than Radeon Chill and now you can use Radeon Chill alongside the, um, the AFMF2 which is just a big thing for me I love Radeon Chill, I use it all the time and being able to use it with AFMF2 is actually very good and remember, this is just a technical preview this will only get better now, what to know? AFMF is a state-of-art frame generation technology exclusive to AMD. It enhances frame, frame rates and gameplay smoothness and is integrated into AMD software Adrenaline Edition. As part of AMD HyperRx, our one-click performance solution, it delivers exceptional gaming experiences on AMD Radeon graphics cards. AFMF2 can be enabled for any OpenGL Vulkan DX11 and 12 title using HyperRx or the AMD Fluid Motion 2 toggle. FMF2 is supported on the AMD Radeon 700M and 800M integrated graphics as well, like I told you before. Mini computers and laptops will actually love this. AMD Radeon RX 6000 and RX 7000 series desktop and mobile discrete graphics cards. AFMF2 currently requires the game to be played in exclusive or borderless full screen mode, with VSync disabled. Although I tested it in full screen and it just worked fine. I tested it in both full screen and borderless full screen and it just worked fine. It just happens that in borderless full screen it works slightly better, okay? Which is which is an advantage in terms of quality if you really want to. Otherwise, keep it uh, at full screen because it won't really be that bad. For a better visual experience, use AFMF2 with a variable refresh rate enabled display. Of course, VRR, FreeSync, etc. Enable Radeon Chill after AFMF will automatically set the FPS cap to reduce staring, meaning that you, you use the Radeon Chill, like I explained in this video passing right now on the screen, you use Radeon Chill to lock the frame rates to, let's say, a little bit less than half your monitor's refresh rate, and then the software AFMF2 will double on top of those base frames. Imagine that you have a 144Hz. Your normal frame rates are, let's say, 100 now, since you have 144, you lock the frame rates to 72, for example, because 72 plus 72 is 144. So in this situation, you lock to 71 due to in order to avoid the in order to avoid the, the FPS fluctuations to not cause tearing. And then AFMF2 will double those 71 to 142 and you are still inside your monitor's refresh rate, having no tearing whatsoever and having way more smoothness. You can also use the in-game overlay with Alt plus R in the AMD Software Adrenaline Edition to check AFMF's frame generation status. AFMF2 adds frame generation technology to boost FPS outside the game's engine. Users can enable AMD Software Performance Metrics overlay to see the resulting FPS. And by the way, yes, um, 
What I was going to say is that you need to use AMD's overlay to watch or to see the real number of FPS that you're having uh, in that moment if you're using AFMF2. If you're using, let's say, um, MS Afterburner, if you are using any other overlay, it won't be able to read AFMF2 final frame. So it will just show you the FPS that we are going to cap uh, if we actually use the previous example. If you are using Afterburner, it will just show you 71 FPS. It won't show you the 142, okay? So you need to use AMD's overlay in order to see the final 142 frames with a micro stuttering rate, with a frame generation lag. AMD's overlay actually is very good in that scenario, very cool to use. And users looking for a way to measure the response time of games can use our frame latency meter, FLM. By the way, I have a video on that frame latency meter as well and it is actually working in terms of camera movement it can actually show you the difference in between fmf1 fmf2 and even fsr3 frame generation or no frame generation whatsoever which is actually pretty nice as well how to optimize? AFMF2 introduces new modes that are automatically tuned for the best experience based on your configuration. And these can be manually adjusted to, to your preferences, sorry, if needed. AFMF2 has a new high search mode setting for improved frame consistency during fast motion, enabled by default for resolutions of 1440p and above. And this reduces the jittering or stuttering encountered with AFMF1 at higher resolutions. AFMF2 adds a new performance mode setting to reduce frame generation overhead, basically meaning that it will cost less FPS for, to enable AFMF2 with this performance mode, enabled as performance by default for integrated graphics products. Integrated graphics users may switch back to the quality performance preset for better frame generation quality du during motion. The quality preset is the default when using discrete graphics cards. And now basically we have the same for the performance mode that the default is this, the default is that, doesn't really matter. Now this is a very, very interesting feature. Multi-GPU configurations. For any hybrid graphics configurations, AFMF2 will use the displaying GPU for frame generation, allowing the render GPU to focus on the game. And this is really, really awesome. I'm still waiting for the, for the ZenBook 16 or X16 S. S16 or something like that, that AMD sent. They actually had to send, send it from America, um, then to Europe, then to Portugal, and that's why it's taking longer. But I believe it will be here this week with um, with the Radeon 890M, RDNA 3.5 and so on. What this means is that AFMF2 can actually display the image with the integrated graphics, meaning that it won't take resources of the discrete GPU to use AFMF2, meaning that your game won't have any performance drops because you are using the integrated graphics for AFMF2 and the discrete graphics for the game, which is very, very nice actually. I'm eager to test this to see if it works properly or not. And for people asking themselves if this will improve or not, yes, of course it will. They are releasing the technical preview exactly in order to improve quality, latency and so on. That's what they want. They, they themselves say, what's next? We are continuously refining HyperRx with AFMF2, using feedback from gamers across thousands of games to drive innovation. Join the conversation by sharing how well AFMF2 is working on your system. We also have a fixed issue with AFMF may become inactive after enabling certain on-screen overlays. I tested with MS Afterburner and other overlays and it worked fine. And we have the known issues, with performance metrics overlay may intermittently report, report NA after task switching with certain display configurations, I actually had a user telling me that they had this issue. Baldur's Gate 3 may experience a nap crash on AMD Ryzen AI 300 series processors. Intermittent driver timeout may occur after opening the Xbox game bar while AFMF2 and RSR is active with certain Vulkan games. So if you're running some Vulkan games like, let's say, Red Dead Redemption 2, if you're using RSR and AFMF2 at the same time with HyperRx, of course, well, and while using the Xbox game bear, a game bar at the same time, bear, game bear, <laughs> the game bar at the same time, it might cause issues. And the last known issue is AFMF2 may intermittently become inactive after doing a task switch with certain applications. So as you saw, these drivers are mainly for AFMF2 and here in the release notes, they explain everything you need to know about AFMF2, where it brings new, new features, new performance modes and so on. And if you want to see it working in real life or at least 
least with me explaining it in real life and you watch the FPS, you have this video passing right now in the screen. And by the way, I had early access to these drivers, so I've been running them daily as a daily driver for like for like a week, maybe a bit more than a week. And I can tell you right away that on my 7900 XTX, they are basically perfect. Um, they do have one issue. The only issue that I encountered is that my overclocking profile isn't 100% stable with these drivers, but that's about it. It just won't retain the overclocking settings. And when this happens, it means usually that the overclocking settings aren't 100% stable. Uh, while they are on most driver versions with these technical preview drivers, well, <laughs> it isn't, but it isn't actually an issue because it's a me issue because it's my overclocking profile. If I was running the card stock, it would be completely fine. I also tested Battlefield 2042. It is working perfectly as with the 24.7.1 drivers. Fortnite is also working fine. Uh, EA FC Sports 24 is also working fine. So, I mean, it's basically 24.7.1 drivers with the FMF2, maybe with some tweaks here and there. And well, guys, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Leave in the comment section your experience with these drivers. And don't forget, let me know if AFMF2 works well for you, if these drivers actu actually cause some issues. And remember, these are kind of beta drivers. They're the technical preview. Things will change, things will improve and get better. And that's why AMD is releasing these drivers. So test them at your own will, of course, but test them as well at your own risk. Let's say that. Take your own risk because it, you might encounter a bug here and there because, once again, these are technical preview. And if you encounter a bug, use the AMD bug report tool and report that to AMD so they can fix the bug and make things better overall. Once again, thank you very much for watching and see you guys in the next video. Cheers.